Hello Paper Crafters, I'm Sunny Sky, and today I've got for you a nice watercolor wash sunset. There is some glitter in the background and the embossed bench, but really the fun focus is on this watercolor background that we're going to create. We're using our acrylic blocks as our palettes to grab the color directly from them. So simple. You're going to love this technique. All right, so here are your card stock sizes that you need for today's video. You do need a piece of scrap paper to stamp and emboss the bench and then cut it out with the coordinating die. And I've got the Rich Razzleberry full card just sitting behind these two just to save space. Here we're using crushed curry, pumpkin pie, and Rich Razzleberry for our sunset. So we're using our stamp pads as our palettes and just pop your block down on the stamp pad. You know, in the past we've done um, where you take your stamp pad, squish down the top, and get the ink right in the well there. And you can still do that, and you're going to see that I've done this before. But if you like to keep that clean, you can just put that um, acrylic block right into the stamp pad. And I've already done my pumpkin pie and my rich raspberry. Taking my... Uh, piece of cardstock here, and I'm going to start from light to dark. This is my water brush. I'm going to make sure that it's moist, just pressing in on it a little bit to get the water. You see that it's moist, and I'm going to grab some color from the block. And I'm just going to start with a watercolor wash along the top of my paper here, and then I'm going light to dark, so I don't really have to clean this between. But if you are going other than that, you would just clean off the brush here, make sure there's no color remaining. I'll go into my pumpkin pie. I think I might just squeeze a little water down into it to make it a little more juicy. I'm going to come up into the yellow because it's boldest where I start. So I'm going to bring the orange up into the yellow and then go into the rich raspberry. This one is a stronger color, so definitely need some water on this. Starting at the bottom, working it up into the orange. Okay, that's just how you're making your sunset. Um, this is going to curl you can already see it's curling quite a bit because I've added a bunch of water to this piece you need to let it fully dry and once it is dry you can set a block down on top of it uh, to help flatten it so but I would wait until it's dry to put a block down on top of that so I have one that I have already completed for you and you can see this one is a lot paler um, this one will end up being this bright that's how bright I made it. This one is paler just because I didn't put as much ink on it, so it's going to stay pale. But once it is dry, then you can stamp your greeting right on top. We have this sitting, thinking, missing you greeting that I'm going to stamp in pumpkin pie. And I'm going to do that up on the upper left. Try and make it level, parallel to the card image. There we go. That's pretty good. And then we'll work on our bench. All right, I've got this one. It's not, it's dry to the touch to the front, but it's still, the paper feels a little damp. But it's dry enough that I can go ahead and put the image on there. So I'll do that. But I don't want to uh, adhere it to the full card yet. So I'm going to use the one that I did before. This I showed you this paler one. And I've put a lot of dimensionals on the back because this glimmer paper does not like to stick to things. So I've already peeled the backings off of these. Um, so I have put a lot on there to make it stick. Now I tried with the adhesive foam steps, uh, adhesive foam strips. We did those in Stamp Club. But I found that mine were picking up and lifting off after a while. Uh, so thinking the dimensions are a little more sticky. I've already taken the backs off of these as well, and I'm just adding that bench to the front of the card. And then when you're putting it on the full card, the back side of the glimmer paper is fine. You don't need uh, the dimensionals for that. It will stick because it's smooth on the back side. So just creating that. Now, this is kind of a dark interior, so if you want to take an additional piece of cardstock you can use the same size that you cut for your front watercolor wash which is from your five from one video where you can get five out of one sheet you put that right in the center there and um, what I did before on one of these was to stamp a couple little birds 
in the background uh, on the inside there and just watercolor them. And I used the water brush and the uh, acrylic blocks, just like we did for the watercolor wash that's on the front. So I do use those to stamp the birds. So this is another version that I did <clears throat> with a little different. Um, this bench has a, a heart in the center of it. So if you wanted to cover up the heart, if that bothers you, you could just put a best friend's sign there. Okay, these are all the variations of this card. You can tell that the watercolor wash technique is going to be different each time that you complete it. And you can see this one is trying to lift up, but with my dimensionals, they're staying on much better than those uh, foam strips did. So take this technique and use your acrylic blocks as pellets for your ink is another way that you can use them. And go have some fun crafting today. Give me a thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed this technique. You can shop on my website, subscribe to the channel so you'll get all the fun videos, and share it with a friend who might also enjoy this technique. Thank you guys.